go. Good afternoon, everyone, and greetings. Um, welcome to our first ever APHA Town Hall. We're going to spend our time today telling you a little about APHA and looking towards the future. We will have a quality uh, Q&A session at the end, and you can submit your questions at any time during the presentation using either the comment box on your browser or Twitter using the hashtag, you know, hashtag APHA webinar. I wanted to start by thanking you, and that means thanking you for being an APHA member and part of our APHA family. You know, this is your professional home, and we wanted to make sure that you know everything that we are doing and how to take advantage of everything here that APHA offers. Uh, we are your professional association, and we have been working um, for you since 1872. Since our inception, we have championed the health of all people and all communities, and we work to strengthen the public health profession and speak out for health issues and policies that are backed by the best science and the best evidence. Now, we weigh in on issues when they are important and can be impactful. Noting important with health has happened, nothing at all has happened that's important without APHA fingerprints being on it. Even if you haven't always seen us, we have been there. So for example, you know, back in 1900, Walter Reed reported at the APHA annual meeting that mosquitoes carry yellow fever. We were a leader in removing cigarettes from airplanes. During the early days of the AIDS epidemic, we were there. And in fact, APHA testified at the first congressional hearing on AIDS. We were the first organization to acknowledge and lead the education about the impact on climate on our health. Uh, by the way, that was back in 1923. We were also engaged the courts by submitting amicus briefs, particularly to the Supreme Court, on important issues impacting the public's health. Some examples are access to reproductive health, starting with APHA being involved with the decision on Roe v. Wade, to this year's decision on whole woman's health versus helistat. Many of you know that was a Texas case on um, the right to um, reproductive and, health and women's health services. We filed two amicus briefs to the Supreme Court on the Affordable Care Act. And I'm pleased to say that we were winners on both of those. Our view on the impact on health was a factor in the court's decision on marriage equality. And of course, tragically, sometimes we lose, but we know it's important to weigh in with the public's health perspective uh, even as we did in support of women's access to contraception in the Burwell versus Hobby Lobby um, stores case. But, you know, it's not just about legislation or regulation. We are also critical to setting public health standards. You know, in 1908, it was the APHA standardized death certificate that was adopted by the U.S. Census as a model for the death certificate that we use today. Books that are published by our book company, APHA Press, such as our famous Control of Communicable Disease Manual, which is the world's pocket infectious disease control guide, and the standard methods on water and wastewater, which frankly is the world standard on water testing. And APHA leads in the publication and dissemination of research through the American jo Journal of Public Health. You know, um, AJPH was being the first to publish the evidence exposing the tragedy in Flint, Michigan around lead and being on the cutting edge of research related to things such as the success of the ACA and Medicaid expansion, dealing with things such as showing that sugary beverages raise um, taxes and lower consumption, a whole range of stuff around tobacco, things around equity, um, racism and racial discrimination, and things around global health. We've had a strong global health program over the years. And now we're looking ahead to what is next for us. You know, APHA has created a new strategic plan, which hopefully you are all familiar with. As part of our strategic plan, there are three core objectives. Uh, first being strengthening the public health practice. Secondly, aligning organizational infrastructure. And third, building public health movement. I'm gonna talk a little bit about that movement in just a moment. Now, all three of these core objectives come together and are necessary for us to meet our central challenge, which is creating the healthiest nation in one generation. 
Now, hopefully, this is all familiar to you. Now, we also realize we can't do this challenge alone. That's why we're being our public health movement around something called public health. We believe that Generation Public Health is a critical piece of the work that we do as we move forward. Now, we know we need to engage all of you, our members, and the entire public health community in this movement, but we certainly can't stop there. To achieve this big and audacious goal to be the healthiest nation, we need to reach beyond public health and our non-traditional partners in education, in justice, in transportation, people that build our homes and our communities, housing, for example, the faith community, agriculture, and private sector businesses. We also know we need to reach the public at large. Now, we as public health professionals need to help educate the public to understand the value in moving upstream and focusing on the root causes of disease and injury to make a difference in improving our health. Now, this is a big, it is a lofty goal, but it is important. And we need to engage you to help us get there. So the next few months are critical to achieving our goal of becoming the healthiest nation. Now, we know that Congress is back in session and we'll be discussing funding for public health. For example, Zika, we know there's lots of advocacy is needed. Um, a lot of education of our colleagues is important. In fact, a survey just came out today which said that um, the public needs to hear more about Zika from authoritative sources like the American Public Health Association and public health in general. And we hope to do more and more of this stuff around educating the public. Things around protecting the Affordable Care Act and more specifically the Prevention Fund, we know that fund is still under attack. And next year, our folks will be building support through Generation Public Health for the social determinants of health, climate change, and ensuring public health has all the funding it needs to really move, I think, in the next administration from being um, all about public health insurance coverage to really doing things around the generation of public health and building public health systems. Now, I want to now introduce uh, my colleague, Dr. Susan Poland, who's my associate executive director, to discuss in much more detail our member engagement. Dr. Poland. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Benjamin. And let me add my thanks to all of you for all the work you do. And I also want to acknowledge one of the ways that all the work Dr. Benjamin has just discussed has been recognized. Dr. Benjamin was recently selected as one of the top 100 leaders in healthcare for 2016 by Modern Healthcare Magazine. This is his 10th year being named to the annual list. Once again, he's in great company. He shares the honor with President Obama, HHS Secretary Sylvia Burwell, CDC Director Tom Friedman. There are other luminaries on this list. So I'd like to congratulate Dr. Benjamin, but also to congratulate all of us, because this is a way that APHA has been recognized for its work and has been recognized for more than a decade. But we know this is a two-way street. We know that we at APHA are completely dependent on you, our members, and um, all of your partners around the country to have this kind of recognition happen. And our goal is to serve your needs and support what is important to you. We've done enough surveys, you've all been surveyed, so that you know we have a good idea of the things you think are important. Networking is the thing that is most important to you for the, for, um, and as a member of APHA. Being part of an umbrella organization, able to do all the work that Dr. Benjamin mentioned, focusing on the advocacy and the amicus briefs, as well as um, the publications and the dissemination of the, of the sound science that APHA supports. That's related to the next piece, which is the news and information in public health. It is something that we know is very important to you. Annual meeting and careers and jobs information are really round out that top five of things that we know are most important to you, our members. So we've decided to try and help all of you get even more benefit out of, out of being an APHA member. We've created a series of videos developed to help you understand all of the programs that currently exist and are available to you as APHA members, as well as additional tools that you may or may not know about. We're introducing them to you for the first time today, and we hope that you'll take a few minutes and look through them. They're all available on the APHA website. If you're a new member or if you've been a member for years, I can guarantee you will find new information about or new ways to engage with APHA. Your sections, your affiliates, your partners, the caucuses, all of the different components that make up APHA. 
We look forward to seeing you in Denver, engaging with your sections and components. Please take a few minutes and check out the videos. And with your work and your support, we can be sure to create the healthiest nation in one generation. I'll turn it back to Dr. Benjamin now to moderate the Q&A. Well, great, everyone. So we certainly have questions coming in. And um, remind you that you can submit questions using either the comment box or uh, on the Twitter hashtag, uh, hashtag APHA webinar. So with that in mind, um, first question was, how can we, and I'll let Susan handle this first question, is how can we support Generation Public Health? Uh, any success stories about working with non-traditional partners to share? Susan. Hi. Yes, actually, um, there are lots of ways to support Generation Public Health. But Generation Public Health is, um, even as on your day-to-day -day life, when you're talking about public health, and you're educating your family and your friends and people who are not as familiar with it, you're taking the first step as to being part of Generation Public Health, because it really is very much about awareness. We want to make sure that people understand the impact that public health has on their day-to-day -day life. They understand the concepts of upstream work, of prevention, that we have been focusing on for so long. We do have some success stories to talk about. One of our earliest partners in, in public health was 100 Million Healthier Lives. It's not a non-traditional partner. It's really made up primarily or started with the healthcare community, but they were committed to the same idea that we need to work together across sectors to really develop a healthier, a healthier nation. We've also worked very closely with the planning community through the American Planning Association. Some of you may be familiar with Plan for Health. That's another component or action that is directly related to the work of Generation Public Health and is talking about working with a non-traditional partner to make a difference in the health of communities. And so those are just two small examples and there are many more that we are currently working with and we hope to see more over the in the coming years. Thank you. You know, one of the other questions that came in was the state of the Zika funding. What has APHA done about it? Um, I think I can take that one. Um, you know, one of the challenges we've had, of course, is that Congress has not been able to come to any um, legislative consensus uh, around Zika funding. Uh, last spring, the president proposed um, almost $2 billion uh, as a, a funding proposal, as emergency funding uh, for Zika. Um, tragically, the summer has come and gone, and Congress has not acted. Uh, and that's a big issue. Uh, obviously, it's going to take a while to get that funding down to state and local communities once the funding is passed. Uh, the Speaker of the House has, has said that he's going to, uh, when a member of Congress actually came back today, uh, begin moving on some, some funding for Zika. Um, we are concerned. Um, we would like to see a clean uh, piece of legislation that provides funding without all of the, the policy rights, which really have no place uh, in that piece of legislation. So APHA has been part of coalitions. We've been part of working with groups like the March of Dimes. We have uh, written separate letters to Congress and we're poised uh, to work with members of Congress over this week to really push uh, for legislative funding uh, for Zika so we can begin addressing this as the public health emergency that it really is. Uh, so APHA has been very active in that advocacy effort and we're hoping that um, once and for all, Congress, with many of the legislative pressures it's going to have in the next basically two weeks, um, can get the Zika funding done in addition to some of the other challenges they have around budgets. Susan, um, one of the other questions was, um, if folks want to get, you know, they want to get started, you know, we have a lot of new members and they, they frankly just have no idea how to just begin the process of getting involved in APHA. Um, how, how can they do that? First, we we're really glad and excited that you become an APHA member. And we hope that the first thing you're going to do if, as an APHA member is join us in Denver. You have until September 15th for um, the before registration prices go up. So we really hope that in the next week you take advantage of that and register to, to attend the meeting. There are lots of other ways that you can engage, though. Some of them are virtual, and some of them are, um, are involve a little bit more activity. We're starting a series of hot topics webinars for members. We hope that you take advantage of learning about some of the critical issues in front of public health. We hope that you spend some time on the website. Check out these videos. There's lots of great information that will offer you more opportunities and more um, 
more pathways into becoming an APHA, an active and APHA member. One of the other things you can do, even if you're not able to attend the annual meeting, though, is engage with your section. Your section is made up of colleagues who have similar interests, and we are always looking for um, new people to come in and participate as leaders, to participate in the review of the policies, to participate in submitting abstracts. So there's lots and lots of different ways that you can engage through your section. Don't forget to join your affiliate. Every state has an affiliate. We have regional affiliates as well. So we really hope that um, all of you are part of your affiliate. And if you are able to attend the meeting, um, please check out the, the new member session. It'll give you a little bit more insight into how to negotiate the annual meeting. Denver is a, it's a great place, and we really hope that you are able to take advantage of all that we're able to offer at that meeting. There's a question that came in from our colleagues in Iowa, and the question was, how can APHA's affiliates advance Public Health 3.0, uh, especially with non-traditional partners? So for those of you who may not know what Public Health 3.0 is, uh, it is a, a very innovative concept that has been um, championed by um, um, Dr. Karen DeSalvo, who is the Assistant Secretary for Health of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Um, and she talks a great deal about um, advancing public health and really uh, building public health um, from a holistic basis. Um, and I can tell you that if you want to go to the detail, it was actually published uh, in, the, in a commentary in the American Journal of Public Health. And so I um, send you to that commentary in AJPH. Um, but I, I think the, the way to really engage in Public Health 3.0 is for every community to think about what it wants to be. Um, think about an environment in which everyone has an insurance card. And what does public health need to do over the next um, you know, 10, 20 years in terms of providing the services that are customized for their individual community? Uh, and then to, once you've imagined what that system ought to look like so that everyone can be as healthy as they possibly can be, then what resources do we need to do uh, to make that happen? On the governmental public health side, um, what resources we need to ensure that all governmental entities can use the 10 essential services and do their work. On the non-governmental side, through our affiliates, what can our affiliates do to strengthen themselves to support that work, both at the governmental and non-governmental level in terms of advocacy, in terms of building the fiscal support for it? Um, and from, a, from our perspective, in terms of linking to our strategic plan, realizing our strategic plan is about building a workforce, it's about um, building the infrastructure to support our systems, and then, of course, building a movement so that health is a shared value by everybody. Um, so, again, I commend you to looking at um, Dr. DeSalvo's report uh, and thinking about what that means to you and your local communities. So we have another question. How can students add their unique value to Generation Public Health? Um, so, Susan, I will let you handle the student question. We love to have the students engage, and we have actually always learned from the students and what they do. One of the um, first things that most that we think as, or ask most students to do is see if there's already a liaison to the student assembly on your campus. If there is a liaison, then work with them to see what you can bring to your campus. If there's not a liaison, let us know. We'd be happy to work with you so that you can be the primary spokesperson for the American Public Health Association on your campus. But once you have um, engaged with the student assembly, which offers so many opportunities, engaging with your section again. The sections are actively looking for students who are interested in, in the areas of work and who, um, who really want to be able to have the opportunity to learn from some of the leaders in their field. We are we, um, looking to develop a mentoring database and really giving students the opportunity to learn from the people that they come in contact with on a regular basis as well as as additional leaders but there's lots of ways to set up informal mentors and so we hope that you take advantage of the expertise that exists within the 25,000 members that APHA offers there are way you can you can submit to participate in the annual meeting you can submit a policy to go through the JPC process Again, join your affiliate. The affiliates are active at the local level, and you have lots of opportunities to engage with things that are going on that impact you on a day-to-day -day basis right in your community. So we look for you to work 
within your sections, but one thing that students can offer to sections that's really, really valuable because they come together through student assembly is helping some of the sections come together across various sections. You come together as part of the student assembly and then you go to separate areas of interest. Help bring that expertise from the student assembly and that idea of cross-sector pollination that we really know is critical to making a difference in long-term health for the communities when, when we all work together um, help that happen in your sections. You can really be the lead on that. So this next question was directed to me. Um, and, and it points out that something I said uh, a few years ago, that I said that climate change was the most pressing um, public health problem that we were going to face. Um, it turns out that I'm wrong. That's because public climate change is here it is now the most pressing problem that is facing us right now. And the question, of course, is how, AP, how is APHA addressing this? And we have um, been actively engaged in climate change since I, since I mentioned since the 1920s. Uh, we have been concerned about climate change in your health. And working through our environment section and our, our staff uh, policy session here at APHA, We've done a lot around educating the public broadly about climate change. We have been working with partners um, at George Mason's University, Equal America, um, this administration, members of Congress, uh, to try to make sure we have adequate resources to address the issue of climate change and health. Uh, we're all excited that last year the Governing Council approved um, naming our, uh, the theme of our 2017 annual meeting in Atlanta on climate change in our health. And so we're gonna be spending a lot of time working on pushing this issue, trying to make um, addressing climate change, again, a shared value for all of us. You know, the fact that so many of our communities are uh, tragically continuing to experience severe storms. Uh, the real tragedy that we just recently saw in Louisiana, uh, many of the, the floods that are occurring up and down the East Coast. The, the drought and wildfires that we had in California are only examples uh, of the ravages of a, of a changing climate, uh, particularly a warming climate. And so we at the Public Health Association are concerned about a range of health threats uh, to our health. And we're going to be spending um, over the next year, next few years, making this a, a high priority uh, in the minds of everyone. We've already done it, and we're going to continue to raise that bar uh, even higher. So let me let me ask a, another question that I, that just came in, um, and and the concern, of course, is um, how can we as a public health community doing this this you know time between now uh, and um, the election uh, make a difference? And I would just uh, encourage people to you know, as an advocate to talk to their elected officials to point out the importance of public health um, is gonna be most important for all of our, for all of our members uh, to really continually get people to advocate um, at, um, as um, state legislatures right after the election begin to ramp up uh, on their legislative issues for people to think about uh, what are the things that are important to try to improve the health and well-being of their communities. Uh, to get to know uh, resource allocators, both in the public sector and the private sector, uh, to begin addressing things around our health is going to be most important uh, as we go forward. So um, between now um, and in the end of the year, um, come to the annual meeting, engage with your affiliate, in, in, engage students. Um, this is the academic time. Our, our, our students are going back to school um, and they should learn as much as they can learn about public health, uh, but also they should get active in all the student activities in their schools. Um, reach out to our student assembly and get involved, uh, as uh, Dr. Poland pointed out, I think are most important uh, for us to do. So I think um, as we think about this, um, as we close out the year, uh, think about all the things we wanna do for next year. Next year is gonna be a very exciting time uh, for those of us in public health as we begin to move, I think, a very progressive public health agenda forward. Do we have any other questions? Okay. So 
I think we've exhausted at least the questions that we have on the table. Um, I want to um, certainly start by, first of all, thanking you for today's town hall, um, remind you that we're here to support everything you do. Um, and then I want to tell you there's something really neat that we've added um, on our website. And I would just encourage you all um, to do these. Um, we, we, we had uh, staff view a, a film a bunch of videos um, on membership opportunities. And we want to make sure that you, um, you visit these. Um, so first of all, going to APHA.org backslash Healthiest Nation so you can get involved in Generation Public Health. And then the second thing I want you to do is go to APHA.org backslash member slash benefits. That's APHA.org backslash members dash benefits. And, and read some of the videos and listen to them. Uh, I think there we've got um, members of the staff here who are excited to tell you about way, further ways you can engage in public health and further ways you can engage in the American Public Health Association. Um, and I just wanna take the opportunity to thank you very much for your time this afternoon. Uh, this is the first of, we hope, um, many town halls to come. Uh, well, we were going to be able to, as staff, reach out to you as members. Uh, and then, of course, we want to be engage our, our leaders so that they can be part of these town halls in the future. Because we think that an engaged membership is a happy membership, and a happy membership is a very powerful force uh, in our country. And with that, I'll thank you and um, look forward to um, seeing you in Denver um, in the end of October. Thank you very much.